Today we discuss the pharmacology of the drugs in bronchial asthma. This is the lecture number three in the series of uh, treatment of pharma uh, treatment of bronchial asthma. Professor Asad given two lectures. This is the third lecture. The, the title of this lecture is pharmacology of leukotriene antagonist or the role of leukotriene antagonist in the bronchial asthma. So the title of the lecture is role of leukotriene antagonist in the bronchial asthma. These are the drugs which are commonly used in the treatment of bronchial asthma. The group number one is used for the treatment or they are also called quick relief medication in, in bronchial asthma or the bronchodilators. Uh, these, group, uh, these drugs are used to treat acute episodic attack of asthma. They are short acting beta 2 agonist. Number two, anti muscarinics. And the number three, xanthine preparation, preparations. These are the drugs used for the acute treatment of the bronchial asthma. The second group is used for the prophylaxis of the bronchial asthma. They are called anti-inflammatory drugs or the control medication. They reduce the frequency of the attacks and nocturnal awakenings. The drugs which are included in this group are number one, corticosteroids, number two, mast cell stabilizer, and number three, leukotriene antagonist, which is Today our topic of the lecture is the leukotriene antagonist or the role of antagonist, role of leukotriene antagonist in bronchial asthma, an anti-IG monoclonal antibody and long acting beta 2 agonist. So uh, we start our topic today, you, you all know that when the cell membrane is damaged, a cell membrane contains the phospholipids. So phospholipids by the help of when trauma occurs to the cell membrane by mechanical, electrical, physical, immunological trauma occurs to the cell membrane, there is a release of the arachidonic acids uh, from the membrane that is, from membrane phospholipids. The arachidonic acid is a eicosanoids. Uh, it has two pathways, cyclooxygenase pathway and the lipooxygenase pathway we concerned with the lipooxygenase pathway. So the arachidonic acid change into leukotrienes. The uh, fate of the arachidonic acids, it's convert into the leukotrienes. So you know the, the enzyme which is responsible for the conversion of arachidonic acid into, le into leukotrienes are the lipooxygenase or the 5-lipooxygenase the enzyme which is, resp uh, which is responsible for the conversion of arachidonic acid into leukotrienes. And the leukotrienes are the powerful uh, bronchoconstrictor. The leukotrienes are the chemicals or the chemical agents or the eicosanoids. Uh, they are various types. They are like leukotrienes C. C4, C4, leukotriene D4, leukotriene E4, they are powerful uh, bronchoconstrictor and they produce uh, bronchial hyperreactivity and they also increase mucosal edema and mucosal secretions. So the uh, main uh, leukotriene is the main agent uh, which produce the uh, inflammation in the bronchial hyperreactivity bronchoconstriction and mucosal edema and increased mucosal secretion which is the hallmark of the bronchial asthma. The second pathway which is not our concern today that is used in the uh, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or the prostaglandin inhibitors. We concern on the, this pathway, the lip, uh, it, is, it is called lipooxygenase pathway. So leukotrienes, uh, leukotrienes are the, are the eicosanoids which are synthesized from the arachidonic acid which is synthesized by the inflammatory cells found in the airways like eosinophils, macrophages and mast cells. 
these are the inflammatory cells present in the airways and they produce uh, arachidonic acids and the from arachidonic acids is the nicotine are formed by the help of enzyme 5 lipooxygenase so there are many types of nicotines but in this bronchial asthma this cystinyl nicotines have the main role they are nicotine C4 nicotine D4 and nicotine E4 Lycotrine B4 uh, is used for chemotaxis of the neutrophils. This is not uh, concerned here for the uh, bronchial asthma chemical mediators. So what is the uh, lycotrine? They, they produce bronchoconstriction. They may cause increased bronchial hyperreactivity, increased mucosal edema and the increased mucus secretion means the lycotrine is the culprit or the chemical mediators or the agent which produce bronchoconstriction, increased bronchial hyperreactivity and increased mucal, mucosal edema and increased mucus secretion. So our aim is uh, we use the drugs, the, the lycotrine antagonist to relieve this, uh, this uh, symptoms of bronchoconstriction bronchial hyperactivity, decreased mucosal edema and decreased mucus secretion. So these are three uh, very important uh, drugs which are used as a leukotriene antagonist that is the Zephyrleucast, Montelukast and the Pranleucast. These are three are called uh, cystinyl leukotriene antagonist. Uh, they they, their main mechanism of action, they block the cystinine lycotrine 1 receptors which are present on the uh, surface of the airways, on the smooth muscle of the airways. They are called selective reversible antagonist of cystinine lycotrine receptors. So what is their role? They block the receptor, they block the cystinine lycotrine 1 receptors. So when they block by these drugs, Zafilucast, Montelukast and Pranlucast, so the lycotrine does not act on that receptor because these drugs block the action of these drugs block the action of lycotrines on the lycotrine 1 receptors. So when they block the action, so bronchoconstriction do not occur, hyperreactivity do not occur and mucosal edema decrease, mucosa, uh, uh, mucus secretion is decreased. So what is the main mechanism of action of the lycotrine antagonist is they are reversible antagonist of cystinyl lycotrine receptors. Means these drugs block the cystinyl lyco lycotrine 1 receptors and block the action of lycotrines Lycotrine C4, D4, E4 on these receptors. Th this is the another uh, uh, lycotrine antagonist that is called xylutin. The xylutin is different from uh, Zafilucas and Montelukast and Pranlucas. Uh, its action is it inhibits the FIFO, uh, it inhibits the enzyme 5 lipooxygenase. So, uh, you know the uh, lycotrine is produced from the arachidonic acid by the help of enzyme 5-lipooxygenase. So, xylutin inhibits this enzyme 5-lipooxygenase. So, there is no formation of lycotrines from arachidonic acid. So, xylutin inhibits the enzyme 5-lipooxygenase. So, it inhibits the synthesis of lycotrine from arachidonic acid. So the main difference in the xylutin and uh, Montelukas and Zafilica is that uh, xylutin inhibits the synthesis of lycotrines or the formation of lycotrines from the arachidonic acid by the blocking the enzyme 5 lipooxygenase. While these uh, Montelukas, Pranlukas and Zafilukas, they block the action of lycotrines on lycotrine receptor. Uh, LT1 receptors. 
the nicotrine receptor antagonists their route of administration is oral they are taken by orally oral route they are bronchodilators they they produce bronchodilatation because they block the action of uh, leukotrienes on the leukotriene receptors they have anti inflammatory action they have they are less effective than inhaled corticosteroids when we compare with the inhaled corticosteroids they are less effective but they 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 is they they cause glucocorticoid sparing effects so when we use uh, cortico glucocorticoids and nicotrine re receptor antagonists uh, uh, combinedly so we, we we need the low dose of glucocorticoid so it is called glucocorticoid sparing effects so the net uh, the keywords for that these drugs are taken by oral route they produce bronchodilatation they reduce uh, bronchial hyperreactivity they less they are less potent than cortico corticosteroids and they have the glucocorticoid sparing effects uses of leukotriene receptor antagonist uh, the leukotriene receptor antagonist all i mean zafirlucas montelukas and prenlucas and xylutrin they they their main action they are used in the prophylaxis of mild to moderate asthma or the prevention of mild to moderate asthma which is caused by the aspirin induced asthma antigen and exercise induced asthma and it can be combined with glucocorticoids for additive effects it is not if uh, leukotriene antagonists or you may say leukotriene receptor antagonists are not effective in acute attack of asthma so the key word is that these drugs are very very useful in the prevention of mild to moderate asthma which is caused by aspirin or antigen induced or exercise induced but it is it cannot be useful it is not useful in acute attack of asthma so it cannot be used in emergency in bronchial asthma uh, they are used in the prophylaxis the main side effects they produce they may cause headache dyspepsia and the raise liver enzymes so the common adverse effects elevation of liver enzyme headache and dyspepsia uh, so so the if we summarize the uh, role of leukotriene antagonist so first we must know what is leukotriene so leukotriene is a chemical mediators formed from the arachidonic acids and arachidonic acid formed from membrane phospholipids so any trauma or any physical trauma or chemical or immunological trauma to cell cell membrane rupture release arachidonic acid and from arachidonic acids the leukotrienes are formed and leukotrienes are various type leukotriene b4 c4 d4 e4 the leukotriene c4 d4 e4 have important role in the, uh, the in the product in the in the production of the bronchial asthma or the main culprits or mediators which are uh, which produce the bronchoconstriction hyperreactivity increase mucosal edema and mucosal secretions so the target drug is leukotriene antagonist there are two types one are called leukotriene receptor antagonist which block the leukotriene receptors on the bronchial smooth muscles and uh, they block the bronchial smooth uh, they, they these receptors are present on the cell membrane of bronchial smooth muscles and these drugs uh, block these receptors so they block the action of leukotrienes on these receptors and the second one is the xylutin xylutin is uh, inhibit the synthesis of leukotrienes from arachidonic acid by inhibiting the enzyme 5 lipoxygenase
लिकोट्राइन रिसेप्टर एंटागोनिस्ट टेकन ओरली दे आर दे प्रोड्यूस ब्रोंगोडाइलेटे ब्रोंगोडाइलेटेशन और दे आर ब्रोंगोडाइलेटर्स दे हैव एंटी इन्फ्लामेटरी एक्शन दे दे आर लेस इफेक्टिव देन इनहेल कॉर्टिकोस्टेरॉइड्स एंड दे हैव ग्लूकोड कॉर्टिकॉइड स्पेयरिंग इफेक्ट मीन्स दे आर इफ यूज विद द ग्लूकोकॉर्टिकॉइड्स दे रिड्यूस द डोज ऑफ द लो डोज ऑफ द ग्लूकोकॉर्टिकॉइड्स आर रिक्वायर्ड In the main uses of lycotrine receptor antagonist in the prophylaxis of the mild to moderate asthma, when the, in the prevention or prophylaxis, which is caused by the aspirin, antigen, and exercise-induced asthma, it is not effective in acute attack of asthma. This is a very important point. So it is useful in prophylaxis of the or prevention of mild to moderate asthma. Not effective in acute attack of asthma. Main adverse effect is elevation of the liver enzyme, headache, and dyspepsia. So these these were uh, this is the main uh, keyword or your main uh, brief introduction of the leukotriene antagonist in the bronchial asthma. Uh, another another drug is very commonly used in. Uh, bronchial asthma is anti ig monoclonal antibody uh, example is omalizumab omalizumab is a anti ig monoclonal antibody you know the uh, usually the asthma occur when antigen anti antigen antibody uh, reaction taken place on the mast cell and when antigen antibody taken place antigen antibody reaction taken place mass cell ruptures and the release of histamine and other chemical mediators so omalizumab is a anti ig monoclonal antibody it is a monoclonal antibody which is directed against human ig human ige human ige antibody the root uh, it prevents the ig binding with its receptor on mast cell and basophils so this anti ig monoclonal antibody prevents the binding of the ige antibody on its receptor on the mast cells and basophils so it release it decrease the release of allergic mediators it is expensive drugs used for the treatment of moderate to severe allergic asthma which is which do not respond to high doses of corticosteroids so this is very important point uh, the anti ig monoclonal antibody are useful in cases of treatment of moderate to severe allergic asthma which is not respond to high doses of corticosteroids but their main action they they prevents the binding of ig antibody on the mast cells and basophils the net that result is it decrease the release of allergic mediators you know uh, the, you can see this is ig antibody on the mast cell exposure to antigen when antigen bind with the antibody antigen antibody reaction take taken place and mast cell is rupture and mast cell release allergic uh, mediators that is histamine and uh, other chemical mediators of the inflammation Uh, this is the mechanism of action of the ig antibody you know monoclonal antibody for antibody is produced from b cells from b cells to plasma cells and plasma cell produce uh, ig antibodies so what is the action of omalizumab or monoclonal ig antibody it binds to free ig decrease the cell bound ig decreases the expression of high affinity receptors decreases the mediator release and it decreases the allergic inflammation prevent exacerbation of the asthma and the reduce the symptoms so the main action it's the it inhibits the binding of the human ig antibody on the mast cell and the basophil thus in it inhibits the release of chemical mediators which may cause bronchial asthma okay thank you very much